Welcome to Bryant Wilson Coffee. I'm Bryant, otherwise known as Panama B7 on Instagram. I, I want to thank you if you're returning to the channel. And if you're just happening across the channel, I want to let you know thank you for watching this long into the, into the show. Please hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, at the end of the video, hit the like button. There's other content on the channel you won't want to miss if this is your first time viewing it. Today's title is the Breville Smart Pro Grinder failed, but I still recommend it. You're going to ask, why am I going to recommend something if it failed? Well, it failed as a single dose grinder, but not quite. So there's some pros and some cons to this. No pun on the name. I'm going to go over both and tell you why, even though this grinder fails as a single dose grinder, I still recommend it if you're patient. Now, we missed the last two Saturdays of Coffee Talk Saturdays. There was some stuff going on uh, in my life uh, that prevented me from bringing the um, interviews or broadcast to you. Uh, we won't have an interview every Saturday, but we did uh, the last show. And I am going to have a part two to the interview that we did with Amy, uh, where we were at uh, the local Starbucks on a, a Saturday afternoon. So that's coming up, and I want to make sure that you stay subscribed and keep watching your notification. Hit the notification bell. I'm sorry. I want to hit the notification bell bell if you are subscribed, and I want you to watch for those notifications as that video comes comes up pretty soon. Going to be uh, bringing you some more content during the week this coming week. So you won't want to miss that either. We're going to get right into the video. I'm going to... All right, so we want to focus in on the grinder today. And this is my Breville Smart Pro uh, grinder. I've had it since uh, February, I think it was. February or March uh, when I got the machine. Uh, so, you know, there was a question of why did I get the grinder when we had a grinder on the Breville uh, Barista Express. Uh, the reason why we, uh, why I felt that uh, I needed the uh, grinder, the separate grinder, uh, is because uh, from time to time I do uh, batches of uh, ground coffee uh, for my friends. Uh, and so um, this uh, grinder on the Barista Express is not sufficient for doing bulk grinding where you're going to be grinding a pound or two pounds at a time. Uh, it is uh, useful for the use of the porter filter and the machine uh, grinding uh, no more than whatever you're putting into the porter filter. However, if you're going to be putting a pound bag through, I don't recommend using the grinder on the Barista Express. Although it is capable of grinding that quantity at one time, if you just fill the hopper up, uh, I don't recommend doing that. We'll get into why I don't recommend using this one on the machine for a bulk grind in more detail when I review the machine. Uh, for this review, what I wanna focus on is the Smart Pro Grinder. Now, what do I use this for? I use this for single dose uh, grinding typically grinding no more than 20 grams. And there's a, a, a good reason why I'm uh, not recommending this uh, for a single dose grinder. Uh, and that is the retention. Uh, this thing I have taken apart. Uh, and that's still, I have taken this apart more times than I will even want to say, I take this apart daily. And the reason that I take it apart daily is because there is always about one and a half to two grams. Uh, one time I did go in here, I had a, a, a freshly roasted coffee uh, and uh, there was actually three grams of coffee that was retained uh, in here in between the burst set and against the wall uh, down in there uh, where the impeller has forced the grinds 
up against the walls. They're plastic and the grinds stick. And uh, when that happens, uh, you, can't, you can't do anything except take this apart. And I'm only gonna take it apart partially right now while we're doing the video because really it's a pain because of the washers on the bottom burr set. And it fell out even though I'm trying to hold it in there. So these two, these washers, the lock washer, and then there's a flat washer that goes on top of it. It's in there now. Uh, you know, you have to keep up with these. If, if you're not paying attention to what you're doing and you make a wrong move, and that washer, one of those washers, or both of them uh, uh, in a couple of instances, fall on the floor, now you're on your knees uh, trying to locate both of those one or both of those washers that's a pain uh you don't want to have to do that i see where the other washer is and i'm going to get it out of there if i can without removing the impeller okay i don't want to really don't want well i might as well you know what i might as well remove the impeller some of you have not done this so you don't know what the impeller is this is the impeller there now what this does is after the burr set has has ground the coffee after the burr set has ground the coffee okay uh it drops down into the into this uh bottom the bottom part of the compartment and this impeller is spinning around this way and the job of this impeller is supposed to be to push the ground coffee through the slot and down the chute and into through this hole. Or if you have your porta filter basket attachment in place, if you have the porta filter basket attachment in place and the porta filter in there, then into the porta filter. But you get your you get the idea. It's supposed to force it through the chute uh, and uh, uh, down into whatever container you have. Well, the problem is, uh, one of the problems is there is a felt piece that goes under here. It's a little ring and it's got a hole, a slot in the center. It's the same, well, it's actually a round hole in the center. And uh, you put this, you put the felt in there and you slide this over the, over the uh, impeller shaft, okay? over that and uh, there's a key that fits into uh, this shape on the top of the impeller there okay and then you put your burr set on top of that screw it down and it's supposed to be locked down well there is also another washer you can't you maybe you can see it moving right now I don't know if you can or not or something okay and that little washer right there when you turn this upside down, it falls out. Now, it's not really a problem because it's laying on top of the grounds when, when it falls out into the container. So you can, you can easily fish it out. And what I usually do when that happens is I usually just take this, stick it down there, pull the washer out, tap it on the side a couple of times because invariably there's always coffee grounds stuck to it. And uh, and then I go ahead and uh, and uh, put the washer uh, back uh, down here, and then reverse the process of taking this apart. Now, as you can see, the felt ring has just completely disintegrated over the course of removing it, removing this uh, every single day for the last month. It finally just broke in half, and then. When I pulled it out one day, half of it was stuck here and the other half was stuck down there. You don't want that in your in your uh, pour filter. Uh, and so there's no other choice but to take it out and throw it away. Now, I'm sure that you can go on the Brevel website and get those little pieces of felt. They might even sell them in a, in a package of multiple uh, pieces. I don't know if they don't, they should because those things don't last if you're cleaning your machine regularly. And you don't even have to clean it every day for it to fall apart. 
That's the second one. I took the one out of here, off of the, bar off the Barista Express grinder. I took it off of there and put it in here. So this is the second piece of uh, felt gasket uh, that has uh, disintegrated. So as I said, uh, if they don't sell those uh, in a multi-pack, like five in a pack or six in a pack, they certainly should. Maybe one day I'll go on the website and find out how much that little felt thing costs and just buy a couple of them. All right, it won't be any time soon, I can tell you that, because I'm really frustrated with using this machine as a single dose grinder. Now, that's the downside of it, the retention, okay? Unless you put an ample amount, and I'm working usually with 18 to 20 grams of, uh, of beans, put them in the hopper, grind it, try everything. I was doing this was working for a while, and then that stopped working. It started retaining even beyond what I could push air through there without taking the burr set off. So you could get a bellows. You could get some type of a bellows that you've seen on other machines, other grinders, and you could remove this and put the bellows on and then just work the bellows. And I'm sure that that would work to a certain extent, but there's still going to be quite a bit of retention in there after a period of time. I guess what is happening is that the plastic probably has some type of a polish to it. And after a while, the, the grounds of the coffee are abrasive and they cause that polish to become rough. And then they, the grounds later can then stick to uh, the sides of the, uh, of the grinding area in there, the chamber. Uh, okay, so that's why I have my multi-tool here. Uh, is because you do have to reach down in there and pull that impeller out. And, uh, and it's also uh, useful uh, in case you uh, drop one of the washers down there. A lot of times you can just pick it up with this without turning the machine all the way upside down. But as I said, you're going to wind up at some point turning it upside down. Now it's convenient because this right here fits completely inside of here okay and seals against that so what you do is you kind of tilt it and put that in let me just show you while we're doing the video you kind of just put it like this and tilt it in there and then you can tap that and uh and it works of course now while you're when you're doing that you don't have the grinder set in there. You don't have any of those other parts in there. And your grounds will wind up in here after doing that. But you might have to use the brush to brush some of the grounds off of the sides. Okay, that's one aspect. That Those are the, the kind of the cons to it. If you have patience and time to do that every morning while you're preparing your coffee... Uh, then it's fine. It's no problem. This only occurs, I should back up. I need to put some, I need to be specific. This only occurs when you're doing single dose uh, uh, grinds for espresso. So at the lower end of the, of the settings, when you're coarse, and I've only started uh, my uh, coarse settings, uh, I've only begun them at 38. So from the setting of 38 uh, higher, uh, I have not experienced any retention. Okay, none. Uh, but at settings lower than 38, uh, which I usually am going between, and let me be specific, I'm going between 38 and 45. And, and then on the espresso end, and that's for my uh, pour overs, my, uh, my uh, French presses. On the espresso side, I'm going between uh, four, I've had it down as low as four, and I've had it up as high as uh, 15. So I'm only going between those two areas. So a range of 
zero to 15 is where we're experiencing the most retention. And then from 38 to 45 or 38 on up, I think it goes up to 64, I think, on the course end, I have not experienced any retention, okay? So if you're doing single dose espresso grinds, this is going to frustrate you. Now on the pro side of it, what I do like about this machine is that if you have one of those fancy um, little multi-prong, it's usually got three or four prongs. Uh, I'm forgetting what you call them right now. But if you have one of those and you're trying to declump the coffee, the grounds, this container is extreme, extremely proficient at it, at being able to do that. Because I'm doing, I usually do this with just this, which is my uh, little temperature uh, pro. I usually just do it with this, just by going like this. And I've already declumped this earlier. And usually I just go like that. And I usually give it about 60 seconds of that back and forth. And if there are any clumps in there, it declumps them. If there's clumps after that, which I haven't had any after that, you just take your time and go across it. I guess you do like that. But if you've got one of those that has three or four prongs on them, then, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, it's very good at, uh, at using it for that. And it just breaks up the clumps that you might find in your grinds. So from the perspective of that, it's fine. The other perspective that I like about this machine is that it is extremely accurate, okay? Uh, I'm not going to uh, take a sifter and do a sift test to it to show you how many boulders uh, are in here. But what I can tell you is that you do get a very, very consistent grind. It's it's a very consistent grind. So if you set this, I've got it set on 12 right now. If you set this on 12 and you grind 100 grams through here, you consistently are getting the same grind size. If you set it on four, you consistently are getting the same small grind size. And that's like a, putting this on a four on most, uh, most uh, Arabica coffees is going to be uh, almost a powder, okay? Uh, almost uh, something that you would put, uh, well, I'm thinking, you know, maybe Turkish coffee, but that's what you're, that's what the one point of this machine is that it is consistent. I mean, it's almost consistent to the point where I want to take the whole grind mechanism out of this and put it into a different shell with a different shaped chute and chamber so that I can get rid of the retention. I mean, if Breville had just designed the grind chamber and the chute just slightly differently, uh, then this would be a perfect multi-dose uh, and single-dose uh, grinder all in one. Unfortunately, it fails at uh, the latter. Uh, now, uh, consistency of the grind is one thing and like I said this is going on now six months seven months that I've been using the machine and so uh, I don't find an excessive amount of wear on the burst set the burst set right now is probably at its sweet spot I use it every single day there isn't a day that I make a cup of coffee that I don't use this okay so uh, however many days that is uh, over seven months, uh, probably 200 uh, plus days uh, we're approaching. Uh, so 
Uh, the other uh, aspect of this, like I said, uh, is that this container is wide enough so that you can use your little sweep device in there and break up any clumps that are in there. Uh, and uh, it's perfect for that. When you put this lid on, and you, when you put this lid on, uh, you can pour it into the portafilter really, really easily. Okay. Uh, you can pour it in there even, and I, I really haven't tried it without this, but you probably don't even need the funnel to do it. But I leave the funnel on there and I pour this in and, uh, and then I, I go ahead and uh, prepare my uh, coffee. Um, I mean my uh, uh, pour filter, uh, and so you uh, you have two good pros that go along with this uh, grinder. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to recommend it for a single dose grinder if you have the patience to take it apart and make sure that you're getting the right amount of rounds out of it that you want, whatever particular weight you're putting in there. Like I said, usually I'm doing 18 to 20 grams. It's a, it's a simple process. In the morning, it's just, now it's just a, a normal process for me. It takes me about probably five minutes to take the hopper off, remove the top burr, unscrew the bottom burr, take the impeller out, fish around with the, uh, with the uh, washers uh, so that I don't lose them, and then turn this thing upside down, give it a couple of taps. I take the brush out of here, I brush it in the chamber, make sure that there's no grounds left stuck to the side of the chamber, put this, turn it upside down into this again, tap it, put this on my scale and I'm usually right at whatever I put in there. Uh, the other uh, the other reason why I would recommend it is that you may be a person who does not mind having some grounds remain in the grinder and then you just put more. So if, let's say you want 18 grams, you put 22 grams of uh, beans in and grind them and you'll probably will get about 18 grams out. Okay, 18, maybe you'll get more than 18. On some days you might get 19 grams out without doing anything to disturb the uh, grounds that are stuck in there that are being retained. Uh, the problem with doing that is usually the fresh grounds usually push out the stale grounds and it, at the rate of two grams of retention on average, uh, that means that you're getting about a gram, maybe a little more than a gram of stale ground coffee every time that you make a, a coffee. So if you make it every day, it's not going to be that stale, uh, only a few hours, maybe 18 hours stale, right? Uh, 24 hours stale at the most, right? Uh, if you if you don't make it uh, an espresso every day, then what's going to happen is you're going to wind up with uh, grounds that have been in there for a couple of days, maybe more than, depending on your frequency of using it, uh, and that's going to be some pretty stale coffee. Uh, so I don't think you want to use it. When I say freshly ground coffee is what I use for my espresso shots every morning. Uh, what I mean is I've ground it within 30 minutes uh, of uh, making the uh, uh, shot. And so, you know, that's subjective. It depends on the person. It depends on your individual tastes and preferences. But uh, on the whole, consistency, if that's what you're after, and you're after it for under $500, I think that this is still a good purchase, okay? Or if you do a lot of coarsely ground uh, brewing, uh, if you make French presses, if you make uh, pour-overs, 
If you use a uh, automatic machine, maybe you're not using the uh, uh, espresso machines. Maybe what you're using is uh, simply a Mr. Coffee and you want a really good grinder to grind your uh, fresh beans. This is an excellent choice for it. The only issue that I have with it is the retention on using it as a single dose grinder. So that's my review of the Breville Smart Pro grinder after six months. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm going to go ahead and make a shot right now. And, uh, you know, if you like the review, if you didn't like the review, just give me a thumbs up or give me a thumbs down. It doesn't matter which one. Uh, what I'd like to do is be able to count the thumbs downs. And if you leave a comment on why you left it that way, then I can work on making the videos even better the next time. If you gave me a thumbs up, it's much appreciated and we're we're on the same uh, wavelength uh, and I know that I'm doing a good job. So it's an indicator to me. It does help with the algorithm, but more importantly, it's an indicator to me of how the content and my presentation of the content is coming across. If you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. If you want to see more content and slightly different content, <clears throat> less lengthy reviews and whatnot, Hit me up on Instagram, uh, Panama B7. That's Panama B7 on Instagram. And I'm also on TikTok at, uh, I think it's Bryant Wilson 370. So uh, you'll find me on one of those platforms. And I want you to have a wonderful week. This is the week of October the 10th. Have an excellent week. And uh, we'll see you back in a few days uh, with more from Bryant Wilson Coffee.